G'day everybody and welcome. Today we're having a squiz at Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. It is developed by 3D Division and published by Hooded Horse. Thank you so much guys for uh, sending me to a, for a, um, blah, 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 Simi, sending me a key for this as well as sending me a, uh, a an early uh, release of um, the 1.0, which is uh, going to be released on May the 25th, and uh, also the DLC that uh, that comes with it as well, which gives you different environments and stuff like that. Um, for those of you that don't know, Soviet Republic is, or Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, it's a... It's a, it can be as complex or as simple as you would like it because there is so many options when you're starting a new game. It's basically a simulation and a city builder where it's up to you to uh, to create a community, uh, a Soviet republic, basically, uh, with all of the infrastructure and uh, and all of the resource gathering and all of the city building that you would expect in some sort of city builder. It just has so much more in it. And it is a very, very, very complex game. It is a very complex game, and you'll see that in a sec. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it as we go through this because um, I, I'm not going to be able to broach just uh, just having a squiz at it today. I'm not going to be able to broach all of the things that you can do in this. All of the things that you can do are just incredible. Um, so we're going to create a uh, we're going to create a custom game basically. Now we've got uh, we've got some um, we can take a random map we can go Slovakia we can go Eastern Europe European medium hills if we want to we can go uh, a new republic is born Soviet revolution flatland with hills Eastern Europe an Asian map and all of these have different uh, different climates and all that type of stuff as well we can do an empty Asian map uh, an Ar um, Arabic map or an empty Arabic map which obviously you're heating you you're dealing with uh, uh having to keep water resources happening and you're dealing with lots of heat and all that type of stuff the siberian map which probably gets really really cold you can do empty and you can do uh and you can do um uh an already populated one so that's the difference between the empty ones and the populated ones you can see the the little person down here so you can take a completely empty map and build all the cities that you want to build over that entire map with different industries and all that type of stuff. Or you can take a map that has towns spread across it and uh, uh, it doesn't have any uh, industry or anything like that yet. It's just a whole pile of towns with people in them. Um, so I think what we're going to do, I reckon what we might do just uh, just for fun is uh, we'll do an Ar uh, an Arabic map because uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be uh, like heat and all that type of stuff. Um, now there's uh, there's there's different. Uh, this is all the uh, <laughs> these are all of your options, and I'm going to explain them a little bit. And I apologise that before we get into gameplay, that there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of talking and stuff. But as I said, it is such a complex game. So you've got preset difficulties over here. You've got very easy, easy, medium, hard, realistic, and then you've got custom. Now, you can customize any of these. So you could start off with uh, very easy, and then you could uh, start customizing what you want. So we're just going to go on uh, on medium. And medium, basically, uh, we've got a medium amount of money, um, which is in rubles, I think. Uh, realistic mode is disabled. Now, in realistic mode, if you've got it enabled, you can't instantly construct buildings and infrastructure. You need to build them manually, and you can't instantly purchase resources in buildings. You need to import them from customs. So we're going to enable realistic mode, right? Uh, unsatisfied systems, reasonable. Um, you've got to keep the satisfaction of your citizens up. Um, that's really, really important. Um, at the moment on, on, uh, on easy di or medium difficulty mode, um, if citizens don't get what they need, they'll, they'll be cross and they'll react accordingly. You can go up to, if citizens don't get what they need, they'll react very negatively. Or if citizens don't, uh, don't get what they need, they'll react with grumpiness. So we're just going to go, um, I think on... 
I think we might just go on easy for that one. Energy management, um, you not build power lines and vehicles don't need fuel. You can go buildings only, you'll need to build power lines and vehicles don't need fuel. Or you can go on buildings and vehicles, which makes it a little bit harder. So you need to build power, to, um, you need power to buildings, you need uh, fuel stations, you need to be importing fuel and all that type of stuff. So we're going to go that, which is uh, which is the harder sort of a setting. Water management. Um, if you enable water management, you have to um, you have to be able to um, provide water for all of your towns and your buildings and all that type of stuff. Water does have quality in this game, so um, if you're just drawing it straight from a river, it's going to be very low quality. If you're not treating it, um, your citizens can get sick. They can be not happy with the quality of the water. Some buildings, production buildings, require higher quality water and stuff like that. So we're going to enable that as well. I know we're kind of more going towards hard now rather than medium. Waste management, waste management, you need to manage... Um, you need to manage the rubbish in the in the city. So you need to create uh, um, depots that uh, with garbage trucks. You need to create places for for uh, citizens to to uh, to put their rubbish. You need uh, a rubbish tip or a, a recycling plants and all that type of stuff. Um, and you've got a couple of options here. You can disable that completely. Uh, you can go into uh, people and factories produce waste. Or you can go into people and factories produce waste and demolished buildings um, via the demolition office. So you can de you have to demolish buildings via a demolition office and that leaves waste that needs to be carted away from site, which is really, really cool, to be honest. Um, so I think we're just going to go... Um, I think we might... Uh, I think we might go waste. So people and factories produce waste. So people and so we'll go that maintenance. Um, maintenance is basically um, vehicles need to be repaired by repair stations, and buildings require um, periodic reconstruction. I'm going to leave that disabled. Uh, seasons we can enable seasons. Building fires uh, we are going to put that on normal. Um, global events, um, epidemics, drastic price changes and all that type of stuff. Um, we are just going to, uh, I might disable that pollution wise. I'm going to enable. So you don't want to obviously build, uh, a massive, um, coal fired power plant in the middle of you, in, in the middle of all of your housing and stuff, because that has a negative effect. Education simulation, you've got two options here, simple, so children automatically reach basic education, so you don't need schools, and parents can work even while their children are under six years old, or you can uh, have it complex where you need to provide the universities and the schools and all that type of stuff. Um, in complex, parents who have children under six cannot work unless you've built a kindergarten. So it's worth noting that if uh, three quarters of your population have children under six, they can't go to work until those children are over six and go to school. So that's really worse. So we're going to leave that on complex. Crime and justice will enable that. Traffic simulation, we'll just leave it as um, simple. Research, you can either disable or enable research. So basically research unlocks buildings and unlocks the ability to find resources in the ground, like you've got geo research and stuff that allows you to find researchers, um, resources hidden in the ground and all that type of stuff. We're going to leave that enabled. Day-night cycle, we'll just use a moving sun. Vehicle avail availability, you've got all, which means all vehicles are, uh, are available regardless of the starting year. Um, and uh, vehicles are available from the year they're first manufactured or you can lock them according to year. So um, they expire the year after their production ends. I'm going to leave that, I'm, I'm going to leave that as a, a start according to year. Um, so they'll never sort of, you'll, they'll never not be available. Uh, and we're going to start in 1960. I know. <laughs> I, I hope I explained that quite well and what, what each of these different things do. Um, this is probably going to be a very long episode. Now, I believe that if you took transport fever, 
um, a, a good a, a city builder like City Skylines or one of the earlier city builders, um, and probably a, it's really hard to explain, but a whole pile of other games, and you put them all together, and then made them even more complex. Then that's what you've got with Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Let's get stuck straight into a game. Okay, here we are. And the first thing that I'm going to do is pause the game. So you can use spacebar to pause the game. And we're going to have a look at the map now. A few clouds around. Now, if we have a look at uh, the map down here on the mini map, um, you'll basically see some borders here. So we've got two red borders and we've got two blue borders. The blue borders are borders to NATO countries. The red borders are borders to um, um, to Republic company uh, countries. So you know to to uh, other sort of uh, other other nations within our uh, our sort of communist nation. Basically, um, we've got a completely empty map. So what we want to do is we want to have a look around, and you'll see these here. These are basically um, connections to. Um, where, where are we? We're down in this bottom corner. These are connections to um, to outside countries and stuff. And this is where you import resources and stuff like that. Now, if we have a look at this one, it's only a, uh, a medium customs house. It has a rail connection, but it doesn't have a power connection either. Uh, we have a look over here and we have a look at a Soviet one. And here's um, uh, another medium one, another medium customs house and a rail and th this is this is really important because um, you're going to in the initial stages of the game completely and utterly rely on these stations. This one here is um, uh, that's a that's a large customs house. It has three rails, um, three railway entries into that we can connect to for trading and stuff like that. And trading and stuff is really 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 important uh, in this game. Down here, we've got uh, we've got a uh, a small customs house. It has no rail connection or anything like that, and no power connection. We are going to need to uh, sort of import power in the beginning, I believe. So over the hills we go. We'll continue to follow this one down, and this one here is another. It's a large customs house, and it has three. It doesn't look like anybody's got any power that we can import from. So we head over into this corner and there's nothing over there. We'll follow the NATO border across to here. And there's another NATO country here. And they've got three rail lines and uh, no electricity. Uh, they've got another small rail line there. And over in this corner. So it looks like what we need to do is uh, we're going to need to generate our own electricity straight off the bat. You can click anywhere on here, which is fantastic, um, to go to different areas. I think um, what we would like to do, it'd be nice to have a NATO border as well as a um, as well as well um, our own border, a border to our own sort of, and that's a medium customs house. Not as good as I would have liked, but we've got a large customs house over here as well, and we will have access to that one there once we've uh, managed to build a bridge and stuff now there's two mo there's two types of money in here uh there is the uh i don't know is it rubles is it rubles i'm not sure and there's uh there's dollars american dollars so you can purchase things using different um, different uh currencies obviously if you're trading across here there'll be a conversion rate on uh on what you've got there so uh, is it rubles? I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I think for now, this is probably a better area for us to start our first town. Now, you don't want to start your first town slash city too far away from the border, and you'll see. You'll see why when we uh, once we get into it a little bit more. So um, what we're going to do is, being an Arabic country. I think um, I think having a uh, an oil industry here would probably be a uh, a better way to do it. Normally, you could uh, you could uh, look at your geological mapping. You could look at uh, you know look at uh, where oil deposits are and stuff on your map. But because we chose 
that we need to research that, then uh, we can't do that. So one of the ways that we can do that, or one of the best ways to do that, is to go into fuel and fossil fuels, grab a pump jack, and start hovering a pump jack over the landscape. And you'll see that uh, there's a quality of source. And what we're looking for is a really good quality of uh, of source for... Um, got three down there. We've got eight. We've got sort of 40 down here somewhere. We went to 40. Think. Uh, and we're looking for a really good resource of uh, seeing as how it's going to be our first industry. We're looking for a really good resource. Over the river's the best place. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Right across the river here is the, yeah, look, there's 80% and 70s and there's a 90 in there somewhere. Uh, so it looks like our oil is probably, well, we've got some good spots over here. We've got a couple of all right spots there, 36, 38% is probably the best we've got down there which might be all right to start off our oil industry, but we're going to need to move across here. The only thing is I don't want to build over here where all of this, uh, where all these really good resources are, purely because um, we need to be, we need to be close to our own borders, I feel. So it looks like over here is going to be the, uh, is going to be the way to go and that we're going to do a couple of little oil things down here. So we're starting with a um, we're starting with a um, a uh, a blank map, basically, uh, with no pre-built towns or cities or anything like that. You can start with pre-built towns and cities and stuff, and a populated map where you already have citizens and stuff. And everything that you do in this revolves around citizens. No job can be done without citizens and workforce. It's all about getting workforce. So I think up here is probably going to be the best place to do that. Now, I think also we need to work out exactly where we are going to build this town. Uh, in regards to the pump jack, there was absolutely nothing around here. Now, we want to be... We want to be pretty close to... Um, we want to be pretty close to a water supply, which we are, so we can get our own water, and we need to be really close to these uh, these places to import resources and stuff. So, um, in regards to oil, I don't. There's no oil through here, so it's about there in this section here that uh, that oil that the oil supply starts right about there. Okay, it's not it's not a very good source, you know, thirty something percent, but it's better than uh, it's better than absolutely nothing. And we'll work towards building a bridge across here, and have uh, have all of that, yeah, all of our pump jacks sitting along that river there, which will be really really good. Okay, so we know what we're doing. So uh, we want to be close to this, and we also want to be relatively close to this area as well. So I think this area here is probably the place to build. Okay, so there's different types of roads. Different types of roads allow different types of speed for your vehicles. Um, and um, so, you know, the better the road, a bitumen road is going to give you a little bit more. Uh, sorry, my dog is barking. Right, dog stop barking. A bitumen road is going to give you a, high, a lot higher speed. You can see maximum speed of uh, 110 kilometres. But those roads need to be built. You need asphalt. You need bitumen. You need, uh, you need, uh, you know, um, stone and all that type of stuff. Um, so we're not doing that at the moment. What we're going to start with, you do have gravel roads, which gives you 60 kilometers an hour, which are absolutely fantastic. But again, those roads have to be built by your machinery. So what we're going to go is we're just going to build a mud road, which doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be built by machinery. And the first thing that we're going to do is that's where our oil is. So I'm going to throw a road across. I'm going to throw a road across here like this. Too sleep, too slope, too, st too sleep, too slope. Uh, what we're going to do, I think, is probably just throw a road through here. Right. 
Okay, and what we want to do is we need to uh, we need to connect to uh, we need to connect to here. So I'm going to throw this road over here, and I'm going to curve it this way. I don't want it to be too. Um, I don't want it to be too sort of curved out here because we need, in the initial stages, we need uh, we need something that. Uh, yeah, we'll get to there. And then we'll bring that road through there like that. And these roads basically cost you nothing. So we'll, we'll throw that in there. And they're instantly available. They don't need to be built. Next thing that we need to do is we need to bring this road here, down here somewhere. We need to bring it up a slope, which can sometimes be a little bit difficult. So, And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sort of... Um, sort out I'm gonna level some terrain there try and bring that in are we going to be able to get that in uh yeah, we've got a we've got a couple of spots here that are going to be really really difficult to get up purely because of the rocks. Now we may have to go up this way. We're going to eventually have to go up this way anyway, like so. Got to bring that straight through here, like that. Connect those two together, and it'd be nice to have a straight piece, but. We're obviously not going to get one. I probably built that a little bit too far. So, yeah, we're going to need to get down here somehow. And to do that, we're just going to have to straighten out terrain. Oh, it's going to be... There we go. We might be able to get away with that. If we straighten out that, we sort of level that out a little bit. need that green there we go and then down to here and then around to here all right lovely so that's got that road down there what, what we need to do now is we need to be able to connect this road to that so if we just uh mess with our terrain a little get a little bit of green happening there can we turn off snap uh, get that into there and then run that into into there like that there we go so what that's going to do is that's going to give us a road down to uh, an almost direct route down to here like that saying that there's too much of a uh, too much of a steep descent there Let's just try and get this done. And I do believe, I do believe that, uh, that, um, there we go. We'll throw you in there and we'll throw you into there and we'll throw you into there. I do believe that slopes will also, uh, affect the way your vehicles, uh, the way your vehicles, um, how fast they travel. So... We're connected to we're connected to that medium one and we're connected to this light one. Now, the other things that we need to do, I'm setting this up. I'm setting this up now <laughs> because uh, I think our industrial area is probably going to be maybe in this area here. So there's a couple of things that we need to do for starters. Before we start importing it, before we start building houses and before we start importing people. We're going to need to import goods, right? So, uh, for cargo, we need. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Cargo, general cargo. We're going to need. Now we have some free. We have some free road depots and stuff here as well. We've got airport, uh, har like harbour cargo, um, cableways, and all that type of stuff. And we've got warehouses and storage and all of that. 
Um, so what we're going to need to build is we're going to need to build. Uh, let's see. We need to import stuff for starters, don't we? So uh, where are we? We need uh, distribution and distribution office. Now, what a distribution office does is it allows you to purchase vehicles for that distribution office, set them to what you want them to import and export and um, uh, and, and and use those vehicles that are in there to import and export goods that you need. So distribution office is the first thing that we're going to do. These are free. So uh, I'm going to do it over. I'm actually going to do it over this side because... Um, might bring it out to there and we're going to put in one two three for starters we'll grab it we'll grab a road and we'll connect that up to there as well and the next thing that we are going to need which is really really important down this end uh because when you purchase vehicles they only come with a small amount of fuel in their fuel tank so they usually need to refuel as soon as they get here there we go <laughs> there it is in refueling obviously <laughs> obviously in refueling under transport we need a free gas station <laughs> and this is going to be really 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 important for us um because as i said when the when the vehicles actually come out um they will be almost empty and we will have to refuel them straight away so we will throw those in now at the moment we're throwing in free we're throwing in free things so you can see here we've got a gas station which costs resources to build uh, you've got an upgraded gas station costs resources to build and uh, each different size costs different uh, but you also have a free gas station there which is uh, really really important because at the moment we need to save as many rubles as we possibly can to get all of this because we're going to start spending money now which is going to be a problem the first thing that i'm going to do is in here i'm going to so you can purchase a new vehicles uh, using rubles or using dollars it's up to you and you purchase these from the uh from the construction house there so in this yard here the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to purchase a uh I'm going to purchase a fuel truck, the T138 Cistern, which holds 11 tons of fuel. Uh, I think the other one is, there's another one here as well, uh, which does fuel as well, which is, where are you, sir? Where are you, sir? It's here somewhere. Uh, that system there, which only does, uh, it's cheaper, but it only does 3.6 tons of fuel. So, um, so there's a little bit, there's a little bit of difference there. So we're going to purchase that one there and we're going to throw that in there. Now, what I'm going to do with that vehicle once it comes in is I'm going to set that to transport fuel. So we've got our three, uh, we've got our three distribution offices here. <coughs> <coughs> Suck the old spit down the <laughs> down the wrong hole. So these here are going to be dealing with importing the resources that we need to get our city started. Right. Beautiful. So we're going to come across here. We're going to do oil over here. And we are going to do oil down here. We already have a road here for that. Might just finish that road off while I think about it. Sorry, my throat's gone really funny now. And we'll uh, throw you into there like that. Uh, I just wanted to point out the did. I just wanted to point out how advanced traffic can be in here. Um, obviously, you can have uh, you know walkways only. You can have slow zones, give way signs. You can have dual lanes. You can have one way streets, two way streets, and all that type of stuff. So it's really really important to uh, to consider that. Now, the other thing to consider as well in the very beginning is, and this may sound a little bit stupid, but I want to double up the roads. And the reason why I want to double up the roads is because once you start construction on it, once we want to upgrade these roads, um, then what's going to happen is um, 
The roads are going to shut down and vehicles are not going to be able to travel on them. So it's worth having a dual lane running through there. And I think seeing as how this is the center of our town, I think we might throw another one, another road out there. Um, now... Should I bring the uh, should I bring the grid up? There is a way to bring the grid up. You can toggle the topography. You can look underground, and you can uh, you can also snap as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a road down here and snap that to there, and then I'm going to bring another one down beside it and snap it to there, and one more down beside that, and I'm going to snap that to there, and I'm going to continue. No, I'm not going to continue that one. I'm going to continue that road straight through there, like so. Uh, continue that one through there as well. I know I'm building four roads, but there's method to my madness. And I'm going to run that one along there. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to demolish these roads. That road and that road. And that road, because in the future, I want this to just be a really, really, really nice boulevard into my, uh, into my Republic, a really nice boulevard that, uh, that our citizens can enjoy and, uh, and revel in. So there you go. So that's, that's built that bit up. And then what we also need to do is, uh, road wise is we need to make sure that these are connected. There we go, and we need connections over here as well. So we might run... Can we connect to that? Might be a little bit hard to connect to that. Let's try and do a connection in there. That'll be all right there. And we'll try and do one in there. Try and do one. And these are free, these roads as well, so... We'll throw one in there. We've got the two connections going in there. And we'll throw these over. At some point, we'll probably we'll probably do roundabouts and stuff. But at the moment, I just need car vehicles to be able to get across there. So what we're going to do here now is uh we're gonna go into here and we're gonna set uh we're gonna set this road. No. set the road to be one way that way i don't know how to do that and then we set that road to be one way as well i don't know whether that worked to be honest um because i haven't actually done it before so anyway so we've got uh so we've got double road there so that when we eventually want to upgrade one of these roads to gravel it's not going to stop all of the traffic coming down here because they'll be able to use one side instead so there you go i know it's a long explanation but it is a very very complex game so we've got our uh, distribution centers down there what we need now is we need to decide exactly where our construction is going um our town is going to go in here it's going to be built sort of around this area and around this boulevard here you don't want your construction stuff too far away, to be honest. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, we're going to, again, look at refueling and we're going to throw a, another service station right here. Let's throw it opposite there so that uh, other vehicles going the other way can get in as well. So we're going to throw that in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, into our industry and our construction industry. And in our construction industry, we're going to create construction offices. So, again, these are free. So, um, and you can, you can have seven free ones. So, uh, let's spin him around there. And we'll have one there two, three, and four construction offices. Now, I do want uh, these roads to be connected as well because uh, they might want to come out 
and uh, go in one particular direction. So I just want to make sure that these areas are connected. Like so. Just in case they need to go over the other side of the road. So they're our construction officers. This is where all of our construction vehicles that we purchase go that are going to construct our buildings. Now, again, if we had gone in a, in the, into the really easy mode, I could put a building down there and uh it, and it would charge us the resources say i could go uh say i wanted to put down a road cargo station i could just uh i could just click that wherever i wanted it and it would instantly build and it would uh it would just uh buy all of those resources you can see that uh 2.6 ton of concrete and all that type of stuff and that would come out of our uh, out of our money there but because we haven't gone that way and we have to construct everything ourselves which is where the game becomes really, really complex, then uh, then uh, it makes a huge difference. So uh, the, the next thing that we want to do is we need to find ourselves a free uh, grain storage, meat storage, open storage, free open storage. Now this open storage, it, uh, it stores bricks, it stores uh, steel, aluminium, prefab panels, and all that type of stuff. So... Uh, very, very important to have. And we're going to throw him right there. Just uh, flatten the terrain a little bit. And we're going to throw him right there. The next thing that we need to do is uh, we need uh, aggregate storage, I think it is. Uh, where's our road cargo train station? need to find it again it's it's really bloody difficult to find stuff in here because there is so much stuff in here so what we want maybe what we want to do is we want to go into aggregates under cargo which is uh which is about right and we want to look for storages and we want an aggregate storage and this aggregate storage is going to go right here there we go okay so We've got our basics of building down now. I know, again, super, super complex. Uh, here, we are only going to store gravel because uh, because we only want gravel in here. We don't want anything other than gravel because we don't need anything else at the moment. Over here, we are going to need steel, bricks, and boards. And we want to limit the amount that we bring in. So I think... Um, <clears throat> Move that down to zero, that down to zero. We'll move wood down to zero, uh, uranium down to zero, plastic waste down to zero, and we'll leave, uh, we'll bring bricks. I know bricks are always one of those things. So we'll try and bring everything relatively balanced like that. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to store in that storage. Uh, and these, as I said, are their basic, their basic storages basic storages so we still haven't unpaused the game yet and uh, i haven't done that for a particular reason that's because we're not kind of ready to go yet so we've purchased our uh, we've purchased our um our system for here for bringing in fuel that is really really good in this distribution center we are going to need a couple of different vehicles so um now this does have workshop items and uh and mods and stuff like that which is really really cool we are going to need one, two dumpers here for our distribution office. And we are also going to need a an open. Yes, we're going to need an open hull vehicle there as well. Now, these ones here, they're really, really slow. Uh, 35 kilometers an hour as opposed to these ones that do 62 uh, but these guys will hold six, uh, will hold, uh, what will they hold? Seven and a half tons. These guys will hold 25 tons of gravel. That's the reason why I've got them. Right. Next thing that we need to do is we need to purchase another, uh, another open like so. And, um, what we want to do once they come in is we want to do do a little bit of setup on them as well. The next thing that we need to do as well is we need 
if I can find them. Let's have a look for, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm looking for a bus. Why isn't the bus in there? Because it's a, because it's a uh, distribution office. It might be, it might be. Okay. I think I might've built the wrong ones, to be honest. I don't think I was supposed to uh, build, I don't think I was supposed to build that I think I was supposed to build road depots. So what we might actually do is uh, let's uh, let's go through and demolish those. My apologies, guys. It's just me being simmy. There we go. There's probably people who who know this game who are sitting there going, "Simmy, Simmy, you've done the wrong one. You've done the wrong one." Road depot. Thank you very much. One. Uh, let's maybe delete these roads here. Those ones, and uh, <laughs> let's do that again. Road Depot. Thank you. Get it right, Simmy. Two, and I don't think we're going to get that one in. Let's just throw him in there anyway. Uh, just because I messed that up, so let's throw that in here into there let's throw that into there and let's throw that one into there i guess all right lovely <laughs> that's gonna be a little bit of a bottleneck there as well can we go across there yeah we can all right beautiful beautiful so road depots timmy road depots in here we are going to do uh we are going to do our two dumpers and our two open storage. Down here, we are going to do... Uh, now, if we go total capacity, we're going to do one, two buses. And as you can see, that money's coming out of there. And we are also going to do a cistern as well for now. Uh, and in here, I don't think at the moment we need, I don't think we need anything else. We don't need a covered hull at the moment because we're not transporting any of those goods. So there's really no point in having any of that. Um, that's pretty well all we need in here for now, but uh, that will be increased at some point in time. Okay, lovely. So we've got that set up. Uh, we've got these guys set up, our storage and everything. Um, so what we might start doing now is we might... Uh, we might think, I think we're going to have a whole pile of vehicles here that we've purchased that uh, don't have anywhere to live. So I'm just going to unpause for now. Everything's just going to plop into place. And this system here, uh, if we make this its home, there, lovely, and we set up a route for this. So what we want to do is we want to go there, and we want to load fuel. Then we want to go to there, and we want to unload fuel, and then we want to go down to here. And we want to unload fuel as well. So that's that's our first run for the, uh, for the for that system. So now we'll just click on start, and that will go over, and it will um, it will actually uh, it'll actually grab fuel. These ones here, we're going to sell these vehicles off. Sell vehicle, yes, uh, because these ones are the original ones that I bought. So we'll sell that. And there, we'll sell that one as well. Yes. And that one there, we'll sell that. And they're just vehicles that I initially bought. So <laughs> none of the, none of the second vehicles that I bought could get out. I probably should have not re-bought them. But, uh, but just sort of left them. So our buses are going to go into there. Okay, I had a wee bit of a... Uh, a wee bit of a, um, a game crash there. So I do apologise. 
Uh, that's the cistern. We're just gonna uh, we're just gonna do the same thing again and just get rid of all of this. Okay, and let everything come back out again. <laughs> oh, you dick, Simmy. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is set up this route again. From there, we need to load fuel. And we need to drop fuel off here. Unload fuel there. And we also need to unload fuel down here as well. Unload fuel. Lovely. Right, I'm going to do a save now. As soon as I get him started, you start. And I'll do a save. Lovely, save done. Okay, beautiful. Next thing that we are going to do is uh, we are going to, you'll see this uh, fuel truck will go in there. It'll purchase fuel, which will come out of our economy. You can see import. We've spent 107,000 already. Uh, that'll drop fuel off here. And it'll fill stuff up. If you have a look at all of our vehicles, they're very low on fuel. So as soon as this has fuel in it, you'll see these vehicles will start to actually go. And uh, you can see they're all coming out and they're starting to buy fuel. So, and they'll all line up to buy fuel. And uh, hopefully we'll have enough in there. And also the fuel truck will do that as well. Now construction wise... What we want to do here is in our first one, we need to purchase a couple of vehicles um, for construction. The first thing that we need is we need uh, two dumpers. So we're going to go two dumpers there. And you might be going, Simi, but you've got two dumpers up there. Well, those dumpers are actually just transporting gravel. They're going to just transport, transport gravel backwards and forwards. So we need two of those. We also need uh, one, two of those open storages. So that puts four mechanisms in there, in that construction office. In the next one, we are going to need to purchase ourselves. Um, where are we? Where are we? We need two excavators. One, two excavators, which are going to be pretty important. Uh, we also need uh, probably two bulldozers. One, two. And in this one, we need a couple of cranes. Go total capacity. Let's move across here. I can hear our... Uh, so there's our, there's our cranes. These ones are the best ones to get. I know they're a little bit more expensive. So we'll get all of those. You can see what's happening now is all of these construction vehicles that we've just purchased are all coming down here, which is good. This vehicle here, we need you to pick up, uh, to load gravel here and unload gravel there. Cool. Oh, oh. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have to start that. We're going to copy that schedule across to that vehicle as well. And that vehicle will uh, will also do it. So if we click on there and we start, they're going to purchase gravel from here. And they're going to take it down to here. Gravel is one of those things that you need a lot of. Now, the other thing that we can do is uh, we can also click on these trucks and there's a little button down here somewhere uh, which allows you to I'm not sure exactly where it is can load vehicles on flatbed yes right there beautiful okay so these can uh, which means that these guys will load these excavators and stuff that are really slow and uh, bulldozers they'll load on there if they need to so um, okay next thing that we need to do is these guys here need to go here and this guy is going to pick up steel and planks and load those on board and he's going to come down here and he's going to drop off his steel and planks lovely and he can start 
Right. This guy here is going to go here, and he is... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, he is going to go here, and he's going to pick up steel and bricks. And he's going to go down to this storage here, and he is going to unload steel and bricks. And he can start as well. What we want to do, though, is we want to set limits, and we have set limits. They will only go to 28 tons 27 and 31 tons there and once that uh, has these volumes in it they won't do anything else so has this got fuel in it it hasn't got fuel in it I hope these guys aren't going to run out of fuel going up there damn it we probably need another system Is that cistern driving down here to do that? What happened to our cistern? Yeah, he is. He's filling this up here. Can we override that and have him fuel there? I don't know whether we can. I don't know whether we can. They're going to drive up there, but they may get... Uh, it, they, it may be too far away. It may be too far away, but we'll see how we go. So we've got our basics. Uh, we've got our basics set up for construction. You can see that uh, these guys are importing. Now we're paying for we're paying for those imports. We are paying for those imports. So you can see you've got an import and an export so far for resources. We've spent four thousand three hundred and forty-eight rubles to import what we need to import now over here we can go to economy and trade and we can actually have a look at uh, import and export trade where is it here somewhere here somewhere make city current prices on the global market this shows you exactly how much stuff costs so <clears throat> At the moment, in Ruples, we're paying 123 for fuel. We can't do anything about that until we produce our own fuel. Uh, in regards to gravel, can I see gravel? We're paying 6.98, which is pretty cheap, but we can make our own gravel. So you can have a look at what things are worth to to buy and what things are worth to sell on there to work out your global market. So, <coughs> excuse me. What I can do now is I can pause the game now or I can no, leave it running and I'll just let them start filling up these resources. See, we've got some planks and we've got some bricks and we've got some steel. Bricks, planks and steel. They will fill up until they're about 30%. Now we need to start thinking. We've got all of our construction stuff. We've got all of our import stuff. Um, now we need to start thinking about how we're going to lay out city now one of the really big things that we're going to need is power and i don't think well we don't have any power connections anywhere which is strange usually you have like a power station which means that we're going to have to do our own electricity so let's have a look at electricity and have a look at what we've got coal power plant is probably the the only real one that we can do purely because we don't have any um that requires research we don't have any um any any way of importing any power which means we're going to have to produce our own now um it's going to cost us a fair bit as you can see in concrete asphalt gravel and all of that type of stuff and mechanical components and electronic components but it's really the only way that we can go at the moment um and as you can see if you hover over that that produces almost 40 tons of uh of uh of emissions a year as well that's going to be something that's really 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 important is obviously to have power so what we're going to do is we are going to now you can set these construction offices to work on particular 
Like I can select that one and I can select a, a construction site and say you only work on there. But in the beginning we don't want to. So the first things that we want to the first thing that we want to actually build is obviously we're going to need a power plant. And I think the best power plant, the best place for a power plant is probably out here. And I am going to so I am going to do that level out that land and you can see our little excavators there to leveling out the land and i'm going to plonk that there and that is going to be the first thing that these guys uh that these construction places actually uh actually work on so you can specify a or replace a source building which is a building or you can assign a new construction uh you can also set how far they will uh, like 3,500 meters, so they'll automatically work on uh, on stuff that um, we don't want to suspend construction at the moment. But what we do want to do is we're going to need to throw a road on here. Uh, let's see. Let's grab a dirt road. Let's go around the corner there like that. And then let's go straight into there. All right, lovely. The other thing that we're going to need is, and I think these <clears throat> these guys should start. Let's assign them. Let's assign them all to that. Grab you and assign you to that. Okay, so we're going to set this up as a high priority. <clears throat> now, what we've got in this window here, as you can see, it. The buildings are done in phases. And as I said, you can completely wipe this out of your game if you want. You can actually instantly build these and it just imports all of these resources in one big hit and then just instantly builds these. So you don't necessarily need to go to the complex extent that I'm going to. Um, <laughs> so the first stage, the current phase, we need 184 tonne of concrete, 142 tonne of gravel and 113 tonne of asphalt uh when we get to the second stage you can see the uh resources that we need there as well so let's uh continue on with construction there and hopefully oh hopefully we've got resources there so uh, let's specify that and that as resource buildings that we'll specify that and that as a resource building there we go and then off they go so we just want to make sure that um we just want to make sure that these are all set up to three and a half kilometers so that they automatically pick up what they need to there we go and right there as well what you're going to see now is we're going to start delivering our resources to these jobs and to this construction site over here which is fantastic now having the ability once we've delivered the gravel that we need to have these uh to have these uh cranes <clears throat> moved via these trucks is uh is actually a really 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 cool thing all right, so that's our first construction site there. And it's an essential one because we don't have any power connections. So there's nowhere that we can import power from. We're going to have to import coal. The next thing that you'll notice that when we're trying to build these is we need workers. You can see how many workers we can take in this for construction of this. Where do we get workers? We don't have any houses. We don't have any population. That's where these buses come in. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is we are going to build ourselves uh, for citizens bus stops there, right there. We're going to build ourselves a, there should be a free, that, that's a free bus stop right there. <clears throat> 
So what we're going to do is we are going to grab that. And I do need to talk about footpaths in a minute. But I'm going to grab that and I'm going to... Oh, right across the road from there. I'm going to place that in there. And I'm also going to place another one... Probably not down there. I'm not going to place another one at this point in time. Until we work out exactly where we're building our next buildings. Now this bus stop here. We need uh, roads connecting it obviously. We'll run you into there. And we will run you into there. Like so. Now we will get this bus here. To uh, pick up people from here. And we will get them to unload people from there. So the load and unload in both areas. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to um, to bring in the uh, people that we need to construct this. <clears throat> so we're importing foreign labor and we're paying foreign labor and we're taking them backwards and forwards every day. Now, uh, you'll notice footpaths. Really, really, really important. Footpaths are really important. And the reason why they're really important is because citizens can't get around without footpaths. So what we want to do is we want to throw a... No, probably not there. We want to throw a footpath across there. We want to throw a footpath across there. And I want to throw a footpath through there and then into there as well. Now, as I said, w w workers can... Um, Workers need footpaths to be able to access, <coughs> excuse me, to be able to access sites, uh, shops, and all that type of stuff. So they're a very, very important aspect of the game. And when we get in, if you guys want to see a series, when we get into uh, our housing and stuff like that later on, then you will see uh, just how important that is. Um, without having the access, you can see the uh, you can see the truck coming in here. And uh, he'll be coming in and dumping dirt here into our uh, into our thing there, into our construction site. And once we've got enough gravel in here, we've got workers in there already. Once we've got enough gravel in there, you can see the gravel coming in. We need 117 tonnes. Um, then we will actually, what I might do, I think, is I might grab... Might grab one of these gravel trucks. Seems like everybody's uh, seems to be a little bit. What are you doing? Need to get rid of that. Thank you very much. What are you guys doing? You're unloading and you're unloading. Where's your home? Where is your home? This one here is bugged out. I don't know where he's from. Where is your home? Probably should have changed the colors, shouldn't we? You there, where is your home? Do you get it from our storage and you unload a coal power plant? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll change your color. The blue. You get it from here and you drop it off at the power plant. So we'll change your color to blue as well. This guy here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change his schedule. So he's buying from the customs house and here I'm going to remove that. If I can, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to add I'm going to add this here and I'm going to have him no, he's not going to do it. Bugger. Okay, just unload gravel there and they can keep coming back up. I was going to do like load directly just go fump 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 but it doesn't look like it's going to work that way 
All right, so that bottleneck has, uh, has, has happened. That's all good. Then what we're going to do as well is we'll probably change the color of these vehicles here to a... Let's change them to a blue stripe so that we know they come from here. There we go. Lovely. All right, perfect. Okay, cool. So everything's sitting idle other than what needs to be uh, put in there. And at the moment, we need to get all of this gravel. And we also need to get some concrete in. So what we're going to do is in here, we are going to purchase ourselves a concrete vehicle. A mixer. If I can find the mixer in here, he's in here somewhere. Can you see them? Did you see a concrete mixer there anywhere? Uh, covered, not covered, mixer. There. Let's purchase two of those. They'll come out. They'll refuel here, which our fuel is perfectly fine. And what happens is, uh, like, the game's intelligent enough, obviously, that if the fuel areas are completely full, our fuel truck will just go back and park, it, park in its depot. <clears throat> now these guys will go there and then they'll come straight back out again. Straight back out. So things are happening. Things are happening. And I'm going pretty slow on this because it is a very, very complex game. Um, just just setting up all of your construction and stuff is uh, is very, very complex in itself. Okay, so what should happen now is... I might relocate these guys to... to... here. Might relocate you to there. And I might also relocate... I might also relocate you there as well and then what should happen is they should automatically um once they're once they're there they should automatically go in here and start purchasing concrete and bringing it down here to this job site you see we've only got sort of four <clears throat> four workers on there at the moment we've got 49 ton of gravel the things take a very 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 long time we do absolutely have to keep our eye on that which is why uh, on our money which is why I set limits to what could be stored in here. So that we don't go and purchase a massive amount of tons of this and waste all of our money. The next thing that we need to do is consider <clears throat> exactly what we're going to do in there. But, uh, in our city. But, and then we need to, to consider, um, I think we've got some gravel locations over here. Some places we could probably extract gravel from. And I think that's probably going to be a really, really good idea to uh, start producing our own gravel. Um, because we're going to be using so much of it. So, But that stuff we'll worry about uh, probably in the next episode if you guys want to see. Um, see what it's... Uh, like If you want to see a continuation of this series and watch us grow this building, um, grow this map, grow our first city bring in our industry and our oil and all that type of stuff and uh, really see it grow and really see everything happening, then um, uh, let me know. Let me know. But, uh, yeah, super, super complex game. Um, I hope I've kind of explained what we've done so far to you guys. I hope I've explained that relatively well. Um, and, uh, you know, once, again, once we start getting into all the infrastructure and stuff in here, the houses, the schools, the, the shopping centers, the food stores and all that type of stuff, <clears throat> it's going to, uh, the fire stations, the police stations, it's all going to be, uh, a big project as you can see. So anyway, thank you very much, guys. This is a uh, workers and resources Soviet Republic. Um, I've I've been I've been looking at this game forever, and I've been so scared of it. 
I've been so scared of it because of the complexity, but I think once you start getting your head around it and once you start working stuff out, then it kind of makes quite a difference. Um, to uh, You kind of get to a point, and I played this a little bit while I was away for work, and it kind of started clicking. And I'm kind of like, ah, yeah, I see. All right, what we've got here is we have an issue. We have a massive issue. This is... Come on, you need to go, mate. We've got... Uh, we've run out of resources here, so he's waiting for resources. I don't know whether I've got him set to fill up to 100%. I'm not sure. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye.